we had that, uh, that you can see that uh, for Facebook, and I'm sorry about that. But I was letting everyone know that we are going to be talking about uh, different types of bacterial infections today. And of course, the medical community jumped in, um, you know, over 100 years ago and started developing antibiotics. And they have 100 different kinds of antibiotics at this point in time and over $50.91 billion in sales. So this is huge. I did not you know, even think to look for a group of uh, pharmaceuticals who was you know, uh, selling the most. I wasn't concerned about that. I just wanted to let you know that there were so many types of antibiotics. But the uh, video that I showed you earlier uh, was letting us know that we now have superbugs, obviously. And there are so many antibiotics that they actually have teaching and memory tricks that you can find online. And I was saying that this isn't where I want to go. I don't want to need, I don't want to have a memory trick to, le to learn an antibiotic. I want to have a memory trick maybe to learn a natural product that will help me with that. So that's where we're going today is what else could we do besides using these hundred antibiotics that we have been prescribed over the years? So of course we have to give credit where credit is due. They have uh, saved lives and they've increased our life expectancy. Now, there's a little bit of a uh, challenge to this. You can read some other articles that say, well, you know, uh, the uh, medical community has jumped in and taken credit for this when they think more it was the nutrition, the clean water, the sanitation that really should be given more credit. But of course, we now see in this particular one from The Lancet that, uh, vaccinations are given credit for increasing life expectancy, of course, and that um, our life um, has increased, or a male's life expectancy has increased from 48 years to 71 years because of antibiotics. Okay, I'm going along with some of it, but maybe not all of it. So I uh, wanted to show you and to, you know, like I said, give credit because they obviously have saved lives. But now the outcome is switching a little bit differently. So I've got just a few more ideas to share with you about antibiotics. So we're talking about urinary tract infections, strep throat, whooping cough, STDs, pneumonia can be bacterial, and sepsis. So they're going to give antibiotics for these. Those are supposed to be the main things that they give antibiotics for. But I'm sure some of you have been to the doctor for other things and been given antibiotics. And so this is starting to be very, very concerning, like the one-minute that I showed you to start with that small video was saying that worldwide they are trying to figure out how to cut back on antibiotics because it is causing some problems. So you will notice if you're having trouble with an antibiotic pretty quickly after you start taking it, uh, there might be some nausea, some vomiting, cramps, or diarrhea. So those are more the short-term effects, but we have people who are taking antibiotics long-term. And because there are a hundred different names for antibiotics, they might not even realize, you know, what it is they're taking or associate some of these problems uh, with it. So we have digestive problems and I get to laugh at myself again. I see I misspelled digestive. <laughs> So you can see I do my own work here. But anyway, we're going to have immunity problems with antibiotics long term. And so many people are taking them long term and again, may not even realize it. There's an increase in metabolic disorders. There's an increase in type 1 diabetes. An increase in vaginal infections. Mouth sores and blisters ulcers in the mouth. Our teeth can even be really discolored by antibiotics. Obesity is going to increase. Allergies, and they say especially skin rash, hives, wheezing, coughing, 
tightness in the throat are all connected with long-term antibiotic use. And then, of course, the antibiotic resistance that can lead to the superbugs. So I'm not sure where you're at. Sometimes we have grandchildren that we get concerned about. Sometimes we have spouses, you know, the list is endless on how many antibiotics have you had? What do we do? So I'm so glad you're on today because we have a few ideas for you. I think this slide that I had forgotten I had in here, I could no longer find the podcast. I found the title and the information about it, but the podcast had been taken down. And look closely at the title. This is from Harvard Healthcast Doc Talk. And the title, Leaving the Doctor Without an Antibiotic. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so we don't know what that was all about, but that's what I need to talk about. How can we be not as dependent on these antibiotics? So it is now called one of the world's most pressing health problems. Yeah. And they say, again, this was the top part of the talk that I could see, but it was taken down. The smart use of antibiotics is the key to controlling the spread of antibiotic resistant bacteria and the rise of superbugs. Yeah, can I, can I say yes. something here? Yeah, I'm sorry I haven't put your picture up, so I know that you needed to say something. Oh, <laughs> no, no, you're fine. There we go. Um, oh, yeah. Um, I was just going to say, whenever my wife and I travel in Europe a lot in Germany, and the culture is very different. So, you know, she might get a sinus infection or something that, you know, we would traditionally get bacteria, uh, get an antibiotic for here, and the doctors will not give you antibiotics there. They're just like, no, your body can heal. <laughs> And they are very much against uh, over-prescribing antibiotics. We're here, even if you go to the doctor and, you know, you might have a cold or something minor or even a viral infection that antibiotics will actually make worse. And they'll still give you antibiotics just because that's what they people want something, right? If they're feeling sick, they want to be able to take something. And sometimes people just think that's what they need to take. So it's interesting. And again... We haven't been educated. What else could we do? That's what the problem is. We only knew, know to do what they tell us to do, you know? So isn't it interesting? Did the doctors in Germany give you some other ideas on what you could do for that sinus infection? Do they do that, uh, Joseph? Um, they, they recommend a lot of natural things, um, rest, tea, fluids. Um, they have a lot of like ginger lozenges and uh, uh, salvi sage. Uh, so different, you know, kind of herbal things that they recommend that you take and let your body heal. So, yeah. And that's a medical doctor giving you that advice. Isn't yeah. that nice to know? Isn't that yeah. nice to know? So that's exactly where we're going with this. What else? But I think I've got one more important slide here on why the superbug idea is so totally off the wall. Antibiotic resistance, which is what we're especially heading for in the U.S., is a huge major problem. And they say by 2050, it could kill more people than cancer. 10 million deaths protected. So maybe the whole topic should be how we should how we can protect ourselves a little bit better, you know. And this particular one was from uh, Dribble, if I'm saying that right, dribble.com. They're also telling us honey is very protective of bacteria and uh, building up our body. Um, so we should pay attention to some of these ideas. That's what we need to be memorizing. We don't need to be memorizing the names of antibiotics. We need to be memorizing the names or maybe even putting a chart up of things that we could do for our immune system and protecting our health. So copper was a mineral that was suggested. And then fish slime. Now, this one's a new one. I haven't seen that in any form. Maybe somebody can add to that in the chat or whatever. But this one was just on this particular chart and kind of a timeline. But if you see this one, you'll also see that 281 tons of antibiotics known as inophores, 
I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but those are used in the UK poultry farming every year. So we have 281 tons of antibiotics on our poultry every year. Is it any wonder that we are becoming antibiotic resistant? So, and just a little chart, they're calling it the dark ages, you know, pre 20th century, it was common to die from minor infections. And like I said, we have to give some credit, but we also have to learn that things can change. So penicillin was in 1928, clinical trials were in 1941, antibiotics introduced to animal feed. So I don't mind telling you that's the year I was born. So 70 years ago, everything since then that I have eaten since I've been born has had antibiotics in it. Wow. Okay. Um, most antibiotic classes were discovered by 1962, but then it says they did discover another one in 1987. And today the World Health Organization launched the first Antibiotic Awareness Week. Now that's kind of something when the WHO is telling us that antibiotics could be bad for us, you know, or that we need to pay attention to them. So again, that's where we're going today. Let's pay attention to them. Oh, one more chart. <laughs> uh, this is another way, you know, here's how antibiotic resistance come from, comes from the farm to the table. All animals can carry bacteria. It kind of shows a chart of that. It spreads through different types of feed, through the animals, and then we're exposed to it when we possibly have contaminated food. And that's what I was understanding that my guest had had problems with was some uh, milk that was contaminated. They did have a call back on it, but one of her sons got really sick. And so this is an, a perfect example, you know, of we have a contaminated environment, everything is impacted. So it could be mild infections, mild illnesses caused by this up to possibly 10 million deaths by 2050. So antibiotics resistance is huge and problematic. So let's get to um, some specific things. This is what shocked me. Think about it a little bit. Fewer than 1% of the bacteria can cause an infection. But we spend 50.91 billion, billion a year on that 1% of the bacteria. 99% of the bacteria are beneficial. There's 7 billion bacteria in our body. But we have about 613 prescriptions per 1,000 people every year. So the tables are turning because we are paying more and more attention to what we've done to ourselves. But we have to be responsible. I know I, I've said that several times. We have to step in. We should memorize what we should do. We should take control. We should teach our children. We, we, we. We can't just let someone else continue to tell us some natural things that we can do. Because these bacteria are so important, they provide protection against the harmful ones. I think probably you knew that, you know. But the taking an antibiotic wipes out our good bacteria it actually metabolizes medications. How about that? So we need those good bacteria. It helps digest the food we eat and it helps the immune system recognize harmful bacteria. That's an easy way to say that. I just love that little chart. We need that good bacteria, obviously, and we don't have it anymore because we have had so many antibiotics in our system. So, I'm sure you know what the KISS <laughs> synonym is for, you know, keep it simple. <laughs> Stupid, is that the way I, that's why I say it. So we have to be simplistic. The 11 most powerful antibiotics, I thought this was a great chart. I don't know if they're showing them in any order necessarily, but why don't you have this chart on your wall somewhere or inside your quote unquote medicine cabinet or in your food pantry, you know? So we're talking about apple cider vinegar, garlic, ginger. And Joseph already mentioned that they told him to take ginger products, you know, uh, horseradish root, onion, habanero peppers, oregano oil, turmeric, 
echinacea, that would be the teas, a lot of the teas, raw honey. There's nothing better than an echinacea tea with raw honey in it. You've got an antibiotic right there. And then colloidal silver. And then the another little chart I showed you added the copper and the fish slime <laughs> that I hadn't seen before. So I don't know much about that one, but maybe that will pique your interest there. So let's see what we could do better. Here's another idea, essential oils. How many of you have used thieves? I have had a compliment from uh, my daughter-in-laws that, you know, 10, 12 years ago, I started giving them homemade uh, thieves, you know, or homemade essential oils. And I really had fun doing that years ago. So here's a recipe. You can make your own thieves recipe. So rosemary oil, eucalyptus, cinnamon, lemon, and clove bud oil. So there are recipes all over the internet for essential oils that can be helpful for what ails you. That's a, a different way to say that. And they may not be perfect. So that's why you have to have these ideas and these ideas. And then maybe you've added the Wave Watch. So here we have a completely different idea that is not going to mess up your antibiotic resistance. It's not going to cause problems with it. And we have a lot of testimonies from people that it has helped with bacterial infections. So the newest Wave Watch obviously has a, a thousand settings on it, lots of ideas. Now they are kind of scattered out, but don't forget we've been getting feedback from uh, lots of uh, people and owners on lots of kind of animals that have been using it. And I didn't think of it until just now. I was hoping to update this picture and I couldn't figure out in my mind what to put. But I have had a lady and, you know, it's probably a year and a half ago, so I really have to be digging. But she had a duck. She sent me a picture of her duck that they thought had a bacterial infection. So I kind of missed it. I should, that's the one I should have shown. And they had the duck lay their, its head on uh, the wave watch. There was a washcloth over it and then the duck laid its head here and they had a picture of that. And the duck, they said, was just so docile and just listened you know, to the music. And they were in the chicken yard and they said the chickens kind of came up and made a semicircle and just kind of stood there and listened while the frequency for a bacterial infection was playing. And the duck recovered. That's all we know. Can't make any claims, just saying the duck recovered. But obviously you can use it in many different ways. If somebody's creative enough to use it on their duck, you can figure out some different ways to use it. Now, just in case somebody hasn't seen this before or is thinking about getting a Wave Watch, we've got a thousand selections. I've got one swipe screen up here. There are three swipe screens and there's four ways to repeat every frequency. And there's an ability to create three playlists, but many playlists are already made for you. I really haven't counted them. I think there's over a hundred different playlists. And then it's not necessary to hear it you can set it on four to eight. Uh, it goes up to 31, I believe. So it is playing here. There's no sound hardly. So you don't want to hear that. That's at 30. So we want to turn that down. Yeah, you can hear it. <laughs> That's why you want to turn it down, but that just kind of gave you an idea, just a short, short idea there. So if we jump right into our bacteria that we have, don't forget, I'm, I'm not saying the Wave Watch is perfect or will solve every problem. I'm just saying that maybe if we combine some essential oils, maybe if we combine some uh, specific uh, things on the list of 11, like the, um, you know, the ginger and things like that, that we're going to have more tools to take care of these infections instead of getting ourselves antibiotic overloaded. So we have just a frequency that's called bacteria, bacterial infections and mycosis, and then some other ideas, clostridium is a very specific bacteria. You always have to detox. And sometimes people don't know that or think about that. But if you're killing something off, you don't want it to set in your lymph nodes or stay in your body. So I have detox in those folders and then another detox. 
I have E. coli 1, E. coli in a mutant strain, E. coli, e. coli comprehensive. They're all completely different frequency sets, but they are aimed at E. coli. There's listeria and there's pertussis on that particular folder. So you could play those through and make them loop all night long if you thought you had some kind of an infection. Now, some people know it's bacteria, some people know it's viral, or some people have to guess, you know, you may not be able to get to the doctor, you may just want to start playing those. And what have I said time and time again, does it matter if you're playing something for bacteria when it's a virus? Joseph, what do you think? I'll put you on the spot. I won't put you on the spot, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I... I was just looking at, I had another thing that I meant, meant earlier. Sorry, not to, not to sidestep your question. You but, put him on the spot and he wasn't. Okay. Sorry about uh, that. <laughs> no, no. I, I was uh, chatting some, something else, but um, what was your question? Viruses and bacteria? Yes. I mean, does it matter if we play something that's uh, viral when it's bacterial or vice versa? Does it make any difference? What do you well, tell people? Well, I mean, also you think about, especially with what happened the last three or four years, that sickness that I won't name started out viral and then had bacterial repercussions. So a lot of people got over the viral part in a few days and then had, you know, side effects that lasted maybe a month that were bacterial. So there was some interesting things that that was well documented and known. Um, so yeah, and, and especially with sinus stuff, you know, a lot of times people in, in the winter or this allergy season, they get just a little cold or allergies and then that turn could turn into a sinus infection. So, um, but yeah, something and I was going to go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. No, go ahead. No. Um, but the thing I was going to say earlier that maybe, maybe you mentioned, but just briefly is that I know that a lot of people, uh, my age and my wife's age, we grew up in the eighties and we were getting antibiotics all the time as kids and that's actually really damaging for your immune system so now um you know your immune system doesn't develop with the gut flora and the and the bacteria that you mentioned so i think now there's a pretty well documented um i don't know if you'd say epidemic but a lot of people that are dealing with autoimmune or digestive issues whether that's mm -hmm. gluten intolerance lactose crohn's all those things and some of those I've seen a few studies relating those to antibiotic overuse. So yes. some interesting things there. And we could go on and on on this. This topic just kept getting bigger and bigger, and I didn't quite know where to thin it down at. But, you know, those side effects of long-term use of antibiotics or just, you know, possibly like Joseph was emphasizing, using them too much in childhood, you know, they don't necessarily need to be giving uh, children antibiotics when they have an earache that is usually viral but they do time and time again so you're going to have a lot of children with definite overuse of antibiotics and problems from that and then they develop all these allergies or food intolerances and I did have a list of the things from long-term antibiotic use so we have put our, you know, our health in danger from so many antibiotics. And they're, you know, treading lightly saying that, but they are acknowledging that they have to pay attention to it because it's going to turn around on us and it could kill more people than uh, we would ever believe from the overuse of antibiotics. And then something else happens and they have nothing to control a possible outbreak of an infection. So, most obvious idea is on bacteria, and that is in the germ folder, okay? Another folder is staph and strep that has a lot of bacteria in it. And let's see. So this one, uh, we have sore throat combo. And can you imagine, this is what we went to. <laughs> I hadn't seen this picture, and it was a free one, you know, that I could use from Pex Pixel. I'll, I'll give them a little uh, twerp there. But... Um, can you imagine, 
you know, we don't want to have to keep doing this. We want to take better care of ourselves so that we're not worried about something. So at the first sign of a little bit of a sore throat, you know, play sore throat combo, play add, it's all in here. You can play through it several different ways. You can pick one out and, and play it a lot. You can uh, do the sore throat combo, which covers most of these ideas down here. So we have laryngitis, uh, pharyngitis, sore throat one, sore throat two. And again, anytime it's listed one and two, it's just a different set of frequencies. Uh, staph comp, staph infection, staph and strep, strep infection, blah, 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 you know, tonsillitis, and then our vocal cords obviously have problems. So sore throat, strep ideas are included for you. So get those taken care of at the first sign. Don't wait until you're sick for days and days and then decide to do something or go to the doctor. Start learning, start teaching, start sharing with your friends. Maybe you work in an office and you could print up that little poster that I found and, and uh, share that with them because we have so many concerns about our health nowadays. Um, I see I haven't covered the disclaimer that I have to cover each time, but don't forget the uh, Wave Watch is not a medical uh, tool. It's not diagnostic. We do say words that are medical sounding or medical phrasing just so that we can describe the frequency and what it is made for. But you are the person that's taking care of your self-care. You know, and that again is something we haven't been taught to do. So it's so important to learn about your own body and things that you can do. So uh, we are not uh, a medical product and it's not FDA approved. I think I've already said that. But anyway, should cover that each time. Um, so another folder that is really important um, is actually the Lyme folder. And I have outlined or uh, highlighted, um, bolded, if you will, the ideas that are very specifically bacterial. But again, sometimes we have a mix of things and we do have um, different bacterium that can morph. There's all kinds of things going on with our bacteria now and all kinds of pathogens because of EMFs and maybe some other factors, but usually the EMFs is what comes to mind for me. So again, play all of these if that's of interest to you, but if you're looking for a specific one, here's another E. coli one, but H. pylori is in here too, and that's a good spot for that. But what you should know is that I kind of put this folder together for uh, precancerous ideas to protect you from precancerous ideas. I can't make any claims. That's just the idea. So it does have cancer one, two, three, those kind of ideas. And um, that has been very simplistically done, uh, just a general frequency set. There are literally thousands and thousands of frequencies set for almost any type of cancer that you uh, would want to know about. And those would be available on huge Rife machines that might be, you know, this big. They would be a desktop type unit that you would buy. There might be some that are in the $3,500 range, but they go up to about $18,000 I've seen. And you have to set and you know, work with those particular ones. So again, my whole idea is to make it wearable for you. And I see I didn't get my watch on after I took my shower, but it, the whole idea today is to make it wearable for you so that you can move around and travel with it and use it at different times during the day where the expensive tools that have frequencies on it are uh, going to be very different. But if you have a very specific kind of cancer, that might be something that you would want to do. But I don't think a lot of us realize that Clostridium causes cancer, E. coli causes cancer, H. pylori causes cancer, and these are bacteria that are known to cause cancer. So that's what we have in this folder that might be related to our bacteria topic today. But don't forget, all of these are known to cause cancer. You can just look up schistosoma and how it causes cancer those kind of ideas. So play the pathogen folders for protection or when you're sick. I hope that makes sense. I'm not, uh, there we go. Um, Lyme disease is another one. It is a bacterial infection to start with. So uh, all of the highlighted ones are bacteria. 
So we actually have quite a few different kinds of bacteria on our uh, wave watch if you wanted to dig just a little bit deeper. And sometimes I could have put some of these into the bacteria folder, but it, it was just getting too lengthy. So I'm very specific on where they're there. I'm putting these. So um, Ber uh, excuse me, uh, Borrelia burgdorferi, the actual name of Lyme disease, uh, it is a spiral key, which means it is a spiral shaped bacteria. Now, if you have Lyme disease, what is the first thing that most medical doctors would give you? Antibiotics. A two-year two treatment of antibiotics. Borrelia burgdorferi is known to be a spirochete, which is related to syphilis, actually. And they are not responsive to antibiotics. How's that? So I know so many people who have Lyme disease because it is a huge problem. And if you are more interested in this, I think I have two hours of teaching about Lyme disease. I know I have one hour, there may, may be two, but Lyme disease is huge and it's contagious. They don't want us to know that. And so many people are actually carrying Lyme disease and then something may ignite it and it may go crazy in your body and you've just been a carrier for years. But please pay attention and play Lyme disease once in a while as a protectant against a lot of bacterial infections. So this is a huge, huge idea that I hope you will appreciate that I put together for you. So um, rickettsia, tularemia, pasteurella, or, uh, all of these, bartonella, these are all bacterial infections. So again, specifically on the Borrelia, the name for Lyme disease, it is not going to be helped with antibiotics. And I might kick out one more idea here. I don't want to take necessarily too much time on it. But in case you haven't caught up, um, Lyme disease was uh, found in the 1970s, about 1973, I believe. They had a group of teenage boys that had rheumatoid arthritis in Lyme, Connecticut, basically was where they found them. And uh, so they sent epidemiologists to study and they studied for seven years. And the chief researcher on this, his last name was Bergdorferi, if I'm saying that correctly. And um, he, so that's why his name is attached to this. And they finally found what they thought was causing the Lyme disease. Now, what they didn't uh, release at that time was that Lyme, Connecticut, was also the site of a germ warfare lab and some of those germs had escaped. So now, all of these years later, Lyme disease is all over the United States. So don't forget that. But we still have doctors in the Kansas City area say, oh, we don't have Lyme disease here. There's no such thing in Kansas City. Nope. So anyway, just a little bit of a key idea on that. And you can find much more by doing your own research or maybe learn some more ideas from the Wave Watch uh, presentation that I made on, fa uh, on Facebook. I'm not sure the date. I don't know if you can even look that up, Joseph. Is that Yeah, possible? I can look it up. The Lime one, I'll find it and put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. And I'll also mm -hmm. put the links to the replays. Yeah, there you go. And so... Um, I think that's the most that I had to cover here is that there are so many types of uh, bacteria on. Um, I thought I had one more, uh, just reminding you that STDs have a lot of bacterial infection connected with them also. So that would be another whole set to play also. And that doesn't mean that you are a, uh, that anything is passing, um, I'm sorry, but we still do have some problems in the U.S. with passing things in our bathrooms so or in our hot tubs. That's one of the worst places that STDs are passed. So if you go in a public hot tub, when you get out, 
make sure you are doing something for bacterial infections. So grab your wave watch and play some of those ideas or take some of the things that I suggested already in a couple of different charts and went over because we are not protecting ourselves enough. So even just bathroom use and um, um, hot tub use, uh, is, is very, very um, problematic. Uh, I was at a couple of rodeos in, in different times in the summer and the outdoor toilets. What can you say? <laughs> Things are being passed, you know, and we cleaned that up a lot. So I think so much credit needs to be uh, going to our uh, cleaning up our civilization for cutting down some of the death rate from infection. So much of it was that. And again, I'm hesitant to give all of that credit to um, antibiotics. And again, I want you to be very aware of uh, antibiotic uh, resistance and be very, very careful when you take your antibiotics, okay? If you do decide to take them, but do everything that you can as soon as a small problem starts. That's the most important thing to do is to get yeah. started on it quickly and to have some ideas right at your fingertips. OK, I think I've kind of walked through a few ideas. I could have had more, but I I kind of cut off so that we could answer some questions or, or work with, yeah. with someone. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, I found the links to the Lyme disease Um recordings you mentioned but uh if you could make me the host i can post those and then i can also help if we've got some questions or people that want to share a testimony you can raise your hand or type in the in the q a um maybe let us know what what you want to share and then we can uh, bring some questions or, or stories into the to the webinar okay i made you the host i did not realize that uh that we weren't co-sharing, whatever. Okay. That's all right. That take no care of it. All right. Okay. Let's see if we've got any questions. Do you want me to answer anything or somebody oh, want to lead me what a, we want to do? That's a great question. Steve or Terry, have you seen any any questions or comments throughout the webinar that, that uh, you wanted to share for Linda to answer? I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, I, I would I say, see, go ahead. I see a question right now from, I believe it's Miss Logan. I constantly test for H. pylori. Is there a frequency I, I should tune into regularly? Yes, that was the one that was in the, the uh, pathogens folder. And it, it is abbreviated H. pylori because it has a longer name. But that is the one that you should play. And I hate to scare you there, but that one is, is one that is considered cancerous. So that's why it's in this folder. They have all kinds of things. So yes, I would isolate that one and play that a long time, okay? And don't forget that these do a lot of different things. Uh, I had an example on myself of um, how I was playing this particular folder when I created it. I was just walking around my house and nothing was going on. And all of a sudden, my thumb area just started, uh, it felt like I was getting stabbed in both hands. So I felt this stabbing sensation and I literally went, you know, and I was able to activate my watch by touching it one second on the bottom power button. And I could see that it was playing Epstein-Barr virus. So what do you think about that? I didn't know what to think. I just knew, oh, that's in the pre-cancer type category. I wanna protect myself from that. But I let it play through the rest of these ideas you know, didn't think too much more about it, I guess. But, you know, it's in the back of my mind. Uh, the next morning I woke up and all my arthritis was gone. So I had arthritis right here in the exact area the pain was. And I'd had it for a couple of years. And it was really bothering me. You know, I tried in a lot of different things. And when I played the Epstein-Barr virus, my arthritis has now been gone for two years. And it was eight seconds of, you know, kind of a stabbing pain. And it was gone. So if I have any little, you know, concern about my hands getting, you know, sore or touchy or um, whatever, that's what I play. I'll play the whole pathogens folder and then I'll isolate the Epstein-Barr virus and play that one for a long, much longer period of time for protection. And so if you have H. pylori ideas, play the whole folder because these things all interact, but also separate that and play that on a loop for a longer period of time. Good luck and let us know if that changes. Okay. 
Yeah, that's uh, you've got a few other questions here. Um, one is about using the watch while fasting or yeah, I can just you can read some that, that are related. Yes. You can still use the the watch while fasting, not a problem at all, because you're listening to frequencies all day long as it is anyway. Um, There's an interesting one about being diagnosed with bacterium vanity. I'm not aware of that. Do you see that from Jack? Yeah, I'm not sure what that is exactly. What you know? Again, there's so many kinds of bacteria that they're discovering and coming up. Uh, I declined to take the two to three year antibiotic that was recommended. I applaud your efforts, and I hope that you found lots of things to do. And as a hopefully you're a Wave Watch owner because you're on this program, but uh, I'm hoping that the bacteria folder and some of these other ideas could be helpful. Okay. And can I put the chart of antibody sources? Oh, the 11 ideas? You, uh, is that what uh, is being asked? I think they're saying anti... I'm not sure. Antibiotic sources? Natural antibiotic sources? I'm thinking that's what she was asking. Uh, we have another question on setting for... Uh, the uh, malformations. I do not have anything for that either. I do not know. Um, and I'm, it, I don't know a lot about it. So I'm, I'm not sure I could steer you in the right directions. It sounds like it might be a bone problem, but I'm not sure if that's right. And if it's bone related, then you would work in that particular area. If it's a, a, a uh, infection, you would look more that way, but I do not know what that one is. So I'm, I'm going to, uh, Say so I don't know. Um, tennis you have a, elbow uh, block in the front of your screen there, Linda. And I think they were meaning one of the other uh, slides, maybe on the antibiotic sources. So you're okay. You go. Yeah. All right. So I'll go back to that one. Okay. There. Is that what we're looking for? I think that is it. And it was from fitlife.tv. That's where I saw that. But I thought that was just a great little chart. Okay. Okay. Um, someone was asking about tennis elbow, uh, but they haven't had any results. And that would be kind of like the example that I was just telling you that I had arthritis. Uh, and when I was developing the Wave Watch, the uh, Epstein-Barr virus was really helpful for it. And I had not, you know, really picked up that connection. So if I were you and the tennis elbow one didn't help your problem, I would play through some types of germs. There are lots of people who are actually fairly crippled and in wheelchairs and they have parasites in their system or Epstein-Barr is another one. So play through some of those uh, different types of ideas. You might also play nerves. There might also be something going on with nerves that would connect with that tennis elbow. So play outside the box is my suggestion. Um, someone's asking about uh, arthritis. My hands are riddled with arthritis. Can you repeat again? Yes, you can repeat that folder over and over again. Okay, and thank you, Kim. Kim says uh, every Wednesday uh, when you have a new Zoom, I have another folder I should be doing. <laughs> so that's what the Wave Watch is about and how I tried to make it because uh, we don't want it too hard. We just want pretty much one tool that we can use for so many things. It's got to be so confusing and people will uh, stop using, you know, if a tool only works for one idea. And I've said this over and over again, you know, there's a tool out there for a mosquito um, repel, and that's all it does. But it's a little wrist type thing that you put around and you wear it on your wrist to repel mosquitoes with a frequency sound. And we have that frequency plus 999 other frequencies on the wave watch. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy my efforts. Okay. Oh, okay. So um, the um, sh Shiari, if I'm saying that right, malformation is a brain protrusion that pushes on the spine. So then there would be some ideas for spinal, spine, spine frequencies. That would be the best that I could think of. And um, I don't, again, I don't know if there's any um, pathogen connection with that at all. 
Um, so a little bit more research would kind of get you going and try a lot of different things. So there would be so many uh, possibilities in the nerves, you know, some kind of protrusion could um, put pressure on a nerve. I am not an expert at that. Sorry about that. Okay, and so then the uh, bacterium is is the aviary. So now we know uh, what that was, and that's a, a bird one. So uh, yes, uh, there are many, uh, many frequencies. The frequencies that are general are very good for a variety of bacteria that you do not know the exact name of or that is not covered. So that's why they are general. They cover a lot of different things. Um. Good. Somebody's given an answer to run the parasite one before the full moon and after. And don't forget that I actually did a little research program when I was developing the Wave Watch. I have another tool. It's called a BioMeridian. And I tested 100 people for uh, problems. And it has 50,000 ideas on it. And what it pinpointed the most, the biggest problem in people was, was parasites. So I do have a specific program on parasites. I talk about parasites a lot. Somebody mentioned it again uh, to run it before the full moon, but run it anytime. So what we noticed on my little experiment was that 42 different people had parasites as their worst problem. And within 30 minutes of using the Wave Watch, there was relief, things had changed. Uh, they didn't test for it anymore. Uh, people came back at one week, two weeks, um, three weeks and a month. And um, the parasites still were not, uh, were gone after just 30 minutes of Wave Watch use. And then the big idea was that someone sent me a picture six hours after they used the Wave Watch for 30 minutes, they had a parasite in their stool that was a foot long parasite. And I've showed that picture several times. So definitely run parasites anytime. You do not have to wait for the full moon, okay? All right. Any other questions or other ideas? Yeah, I think that's all I can see for now. We're, we've, uh, we're answering the questions about mosquitoes and everything that I can see here. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, if you want to see the replay, I put it in the chat. But um, there are uh, Rumble is a source of all where you can watch these videos. Also, YouTube. I, I forgot to put that. Up. We we do have these on YouTube and as well the Facebook group Frequency Fanatics. And the last thing is that if you want to buy a Wave Watch, uh, go to WaveWatch.com, and uh, you can also always use the code uh, Wave Watch One Hundred for a hundred dollars off. So, and in closing, I'm going to be a teacher again and say something again and again, because what I learned was that we have to repeat things or we have to hear things 14 times <laughs> before we actually remember it. So here's another repeat. Use the 11 most powerful antibiotics all the time for your immune system. Use the Wave Watch for your immune system. Use essential oils for your immune system. Don't depend on antibiotics that can cause huge problems. Is there a better way to say it? <laughs> so thank you for joining today. I really appreciate your time. Great to see everyone. Take care. Thanks, Tom and Terry. Sorry. Thanks, Steve and Terry. <laughs> I'm so used to <laughs> Thank you. Thank thanks, you all Steve. for your help. Thanks, Terry. And thanks over 106 people. Appreciate it.